All right, welcome everybody to the March 23rd Hyperledger Technical Oversight Committee call. As you are all aware, two things that we have to abide by. The first is the antitrust policy that is currently being displayed on the screen. The second is our code of conduct, which is linked in the agenda. Uh, for announcements today, we have the standard Dev Weekly developer newsletter that goes out each Friday. If you have anything that you would like to include in that newsletter, please leave a comment on the wiki page that is linked in the agenda. Uh, anybody else have any announcements that they would like to make today? Okay, uh, so with no other announcements uh, for quarterly reports, we didn't have any quarterly reports uh, that came in, but we do have the Firefly one that is out there uh, that I wanted to make sure that we brought up to figure out how we get it merged. It's been over two weeks since that Firefly report has been submitted. Um, and we have a comment from Rama about the screenshots that were added, uh, that they're difficult to, to read um, according to our rules. If there's any sort of outstanding commentary on that report, we cannot merge it um, until that discussion has been completed. And so I wanted to kind of have a conversation here and see what we could do to uh, work through that and potentially get that merged here shortly. Yeah, Rama. Yeah, uh, sorry, Tracy, I completely missed your comment. I responded a short while ago. Um, I also addressed Jim on it. Maybe, I mean, uh, Jim, if you can uh, take a look, uh, if you can resolve it in a few hours, good. Otherwise, I'm happy to just approve it and uh, you can update the pictures later. Okay. So mine thumbs thing. up from Jim. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll give it a couple of hours to see if we can get that resolved. And if not, then we can potentially um, move forward with that to, to get that one uh, merged in place. Sure. Okay. Thank you, Rama, for the, the comment. I did see it come in just a bit ago. So um, appreciate the, the response on that. Okay, so past due reports. Uh, we do have the transact report that is past due. Uh, the last that I had seen on that was a conversation that I was having with Sean about uh, getting a list of maintainers so that we could uh, make some sort of determination about the status of that. I'm curious as to what people think we should do moving forward with this project. I feel like it's potentially even past the dormant state where potentially it's an end of life sort of uh, concern. Wondering if anybody has any suggestions about how we proceed uh, with Hyperledger Transact and whether or not we uh, open a, an, um, an issue similar to what we do with Grid to either move it to dormant or to move it to end of life. So does anybody have any thoughts on Transact? Peter? Uh, I missed one meeting recently, so I'm not sure if this is already answered or not, but uh, have we tried to contact anyone? Has anyone from the TOC tried to contact the maintainers? And if yes, did they respond? And and what was that? Or is it completely yeah. radio silent? Yeah, so I did reach out uh, a couple of different times on the Transact uh, Discord channel. Um, let me see. Uh, let me make sure I'm not getting it messed up with grid. Uh, so the Transact Contributors channel, I reached out on March 2nd to let them know that their report was overdue. Um, I did get a response from Sean on March 3rd, uh, basically saying that uh, they're going through the process of merging Transact into LibSawtooth. Uh, and so uh, there's no real project update because the project status, um, well, well, he's wondering if there's a project status that would remove the need for reports, basically, um, and but allow it to remain active to do maintenance sort of releases. And I suggested that dormant was probably the closest that we had to that sort of status. Um, 
then Sean responded back a few days later saying that uh, for his part, not speaking for other developers, he thinks the transition to dormant seems fine. Um, Rye asked whether or not it was dormant or end of life. And then um, I asked if there was a good way to reach out to the rest of the transact maintainers to see if we could um, potentially get a response from them. Uh, I got a response from Sean saying he put a list together, but I never did see a list come back. So um, trying to figure out what's the best way to reach the other maintainers since they don't seem to be active on, um, on Discord. Is it through the issue process? If it's the issue process, do we create an issue for moving it to dormant? Do we create an issue for moving it to end of life? And so that's kind of what I'm asking of the TOC is to see if anybody has any sort of direction that they think is uh, appropriate here for moving forward with transacts. Arno? So uh, two things, I mean, so, you know, personally, I never feel like the urge to move things faster down the 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 project lifecycle line, and so I, I think if we, you know, I wouldn't uh, push for moving it to end of life before we gave it a chance in dormant state for a while. But uh, I think what what if I understood correctly, what you're saying, Sean is saying is they are moving basically transact into so truth, which means transact disappears and all the attention is going to be in so to it because the people who are interested in so and maybe working on transact basically they're going to be working on so too do I, do I get that right do you know yeah that's that's correct so basically the intention is to move transact into lib sawtooth uh with transact basically moving towards end of life um so once that that move is done Right, you could consider transact to be completed yeah. um, because the, the code is now somewhere else, um, and so that's that's the only reason that I um, would potentially push for end of life is because I think in in general it is truly end of life, and nobody should be looking yeah. at transact at this stage um, to to you know move forward with. They should be looking at sawtooth if that's the direction that they're interested in headed. Okay, they, that that makes sense. Thanks for the clarification. Yeah, yeah I, no I worries. They make it clear that this is the states they are in. You know, just looking at the repo, it doesn't say anything about what's going on there. I think. Yeah, and, and I think that's my biggest concern, Arno, is that if anybody were to come in and want to, to look at Transact, is that they don't actually know that it's truly heading towards an end of life path. Um, and that there's yeah. no further work that's going to be done there. Yeah, okay, I'm with you. I, you know, I think it's unfortunate because projects should be, you know, it doesn't take much. All they have to do is change the readme, put a, a warning notice, you know, in the readme to say, hey, watch out, this is actually, this code has moved into so to, if you're interested in this, go over there. Don't, you know, I don't know. Sometimes I don't know why projects don't take the like if this takes five minutes. I know we are busy, but come on. <laughs> Sorry, that frustrates me a little bit as you can tell. Appreciate that, Arno. Appreciate that. Uh, Peter. Uh, I would based on everything that's been just said, I would do two things. Open an issue to update documentation regarding project status. And then to fix that issue, I would send a pull request. I, I can volunteer to actually do this. I would send a pull request that puts it on top of the readme very clearly with a very large font that says that this is being merged into slip sawtooth that has a repository under this link. Please go there to explore uh whatever it is that you wanted from transact specifically and uh that way we redirect people who are interested into the new place and uh it doesn't matter too much in the end if the maintainers respond back or not if 
if we cannot reach them, then we can do end of life. If uh, if they do respond back and they have a preference, then we can do whatever they prefer. And I did find a code owners file with about eight or nine GitHub handles. So we could tag all of those GitHub handles on the issue that we create to update the documentation. And that way we could get a quick survey of who are the code owners who, who are still paying attention and what is their opinion. And then I would give it one week or two weeks uh, for them to respond. And then after that, uh, I would just send the pull request and uh, take it from there. All right. Thanks, Peter. Rama? Um, just curious. I mean, Transit is supposed to be a platform independent, uh, uh, provide platform independent support. So if it's being merged into Sawtooth, it's going to be something Sawtooth specific now? I mean, that's like a change of manifesto, right? Or are we saying uh, we don't particularly care once the Sawtooth maintainers have decided to accept it? Yeah, because this is a case of, you know, a project that wants to be independent but never really was it was never used anywhere else other than so too okay thanks marcus yeah i think i agree with uh, what um i know and peter said before i mean uh, it, it's much better to i mean to be trans transparent here for for the users who are actually going to the transact repository and then they're maybe reading about it and they find it sexy, they want to play with it. However, the reality is actually different and it seems that the maintainer is trying to go somewhere else with this project, which is fine. So, so therefore, I mean, creating this uh, um, PR on the repository and uh, I mean, proposing a big fat note, hey, this is going, going to be merged to ABC um, and then, we can see that we, uh, I mean, just shut down this project at all. I mean, they can they can still get the code from the repository um, in order to integrate this into sort to flip directly, right? Yeah, I think that's definitely the case, right? Like we're just going to archive the the repository and remove it to end of life, so it wouldn't exactly. be the code would still be available for anybody who is interested in looking at that code. Yeah, no, I think from the end user perspective, it would be much nicer to just, I mean, I mean, go ahead and quickly communicate what, what's going on here. And I mean, if if someone then decides to, hey, transact should uh, uh, resurrect, I mean, why not? But uh, as long as this is not the case at the moment. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Ryan? So these are, or I guess you can't see my command line here. Um, yeah, we can. Uh, so I grepped for all the transact maintainers and did a sort. These are the transact maintainers. I emailed all of these about sunsetting grid and almost all those addresses, almost all of their email addresses bounced. The, um, the only ones that were still active are like these, uh this one and this one um so that's just i just wanted to put a little bit more flavor you know i've already reached out to all these people all their emails bounced so uh we can do it again i i, I, will, that was... I will provide right. another list of emails Right, that was uh, for grid, correct? That you reached out to these folks. I mean, obviously, there's the same set of people, but that right. that's the emails that you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those those emails. I mean, I don't know how many. Uh, that's who I reached out to for grid, and you'll see that there's a large overlap. Mm -hmm. So I will uh, send. I will provide you with the emails. And then we can decide how we're going to move forward with that. Okay. Daniela? I'll reach out to one of the main maintainers on these projects, Sean. 
Um, I recently listened to a recording specific to Sawtooth where um, he indicated that he didn't know these kind of conversations were going on. So I'll have a conversation with him. I'll reach out. I'll let him know that, again, these topics were discussed on today's talk call and recommend that he um, reach out to the talk and maybe come and um, have a conversation with the talk in the near future. OK, sounds good. Um, and Peter, did you want to move forward with creating the issue in the pull request? Uh, yeah, if if everyone's okay with that, I can actually just go and send a pull request today. Okay. A any objections from anybody on the call to Peter doing that? Okay, I see a couple of thumbs ups. I'm assuming those are for Peter doing the pull request. Uh, and didn't hear any objections. So Peter, if uh, you wouldn't mind taking care of that, that'd be great. Will do. Thank you. All right, uh, we also have the URSA report that's coming or that has uh, passed. It's been a, a week now. Um, I don't, I think I may have reached out when I put together the agenda to the URSA maintainers just to remind them that the, their Q1 report is due. Um, oh yeah, I say right here I did. <laughs> On March 20th, I sent a, a reminder. So we'll um, keep reminding these folks to see if we can get their Q1 report to come in um, as we move forward. For upcoming reports today, we have the BASU and the Caliper report that are due. Um, so we'll look to see those coming in and then we'll be on to the Q2 reports um, in a couple of weeks. All right, for discussion items today, uh, two discussion items that are decisions. Uh, the first is the conversation to move grid to end of life status. Um, so we did get uh, some responses here, uh, some thumbs up, but I did wanna bring this up for a formal vote for today. Any discussion on that before we have a vote? Okay, no discussion. Uh, Rai, do you want to take us yep. through a vote? Crazy. On the matter before the, uh, I'm sorry. There is no motion before the TSC at this time. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, can we get a motion in a second? Motion. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> a second. All right, thanks, Arun. Okay. Rai, can on, you now take us through a vote? Yes. <laughs> on the motion before. The uh, the TOC, which is to move the grid to end of life status. Uh, Tracy, how do you vote? Yes. Timo. Yes. Stephen. Yes. Rama. Yes. Peter. Yes. Marcus. Yes. Jim. Yes. Dave. Yes. Yes. Bobby. Yes. Arun. Yes. Arno. Yes. The matter passes unanimously. All right. Thanks for that. And thanks for giving me in line, Rai. Um, so then the second item that we have on the agenda for a decision is the uh, update to the maintainers guidelines and the uh, sample maintainers document that Stephen has so nicely helped us through. Um, any comments or questions on this. I know we have the three approvals directly on the, the PR, but uh, any other questions or comments for the maintainer guidelines update? Peter? I just wanted to say verbally that I agree with it and I liked it when I read it. I just forgot to actually prove on GitHub, but uh, I think it's great. Okay, thanks for that, Peter. All right, so if there's no comments or discussion on this, could we get a motion to approve this? Motion. 
Motion. Thanks, Peter. On a second. Sure, I'll move. Second. <laughs> All right, thanks, Arno. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm uh, I'm not really sure what is the motion thing. Is there a guideline somewhere where I can read how this process works? Because I'm not hundred uh, percent. Yeah, informed on it. Uh, uh, which part? The vote or the updates to the maintainer's guideline? No, no, the vote like that. You say uh, like the two other people have to say motion, and that we then can it's send. It's called can Robert's it rules. Or, yeah, if you look at Robert's rules of order, those are the, the rules that we use, and those are going to be enforced on all Linux Foundation meetings in the future. So I'm just trying to get everybody used to doing it now. And just so you know, it's a very common set of rules that are used very broadly in administration governments across you know the world. And you know there are some details we kind of pass over or skip, but I think for for the better. All right, Stephen. Um, I I get that for the previous one of moving grid to end of life, but this is just a PR. Shouldn't we just get it approved by the majority of, and then when that happens, we just merge it? Just <laughs> a suggestion. Yes, I agree. I, I think I suggested that before. I think we oh, should okay. just approve the PR. So I I disagree slightly. Okay. Um, the reason I disagree is that this will be a change to the governance. Uh, uh, okay. So I I I agree in general. Something like if there was already an existing uh, maintainer's guideline and this was typos and fixes like that, I would agree. This is essentially a major rewrite. Got it. Thank so, you. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah. Uh, that's um, okay, so on the motion before the, the TOC, Arno, how do you vote? Yes. Arun. Yes. Bobby. Yes. Dave. Yes. Jim. Yes. Marcus. Yes. Peter. Yes. Rama. Yes. Stephen. Yes. Timo. Yes. Tracy. Yes. The motion before passes unanimously. All right, thanks everybody for that. Thanks. Special thanks go to Stephen for holding the pen and doing it so well. Completely agree. Um, all right, so that takes us through our decisions and uh, topics that were on the agenda, except for the task force discussion. Before we get to the task force discussion, are there any other topics that anybody would like to discuss? Um, yeah, Timo. Um, I have uh, two, and I'm sorry, I missed some of the previous meetings also due to like the, the conflict with the AFJ meeting. And uh, so if they're already being discussed, then uh, uh, please ignore it. But I think one is, um, um, the issue with like the the pipeline and the runners and what the short term thing is we should do about that because it's causing quite some issues or whether you know, maybe we should discuss that in Discord but that's one topic um, and the other one is that meetings for Hyperledger um, are all anchored in U.S. time zones and as a global foundation um, I'm not sure if that is the most accessible to everyone um, and whether that is a like a decision that has been made on purpose or if there's a specific reason behind that. So as the person that usually ends up scheduling the meetings, I put them in the time zone that the person who requests the meeting asks that they are in. So for example, the AFJ meeting was previously in GMT. Um, it's whoever requests a meeting in general, they get whatever time zone they want when they want to do it. Stephen? I was going to say um, having it in a floating or uh, a UTC time zone when the most of the world is still using time zones is a bad idea. So um, 
I think, because it it messes up everyone's schedule as opposed to some people's schedule. So um, I, I agree with what Rai said, which is it's up to the the person to root it in whatever. But I would recommend they not root it in a non changing one until the world figures out that we shouldn't do these time like time these changes anyway. But anyway, hopefully that made sense. Yeah, okay, I think it, it makes sense. I think, yeah, we had it in UTC and in the end it didn't end up really well because yeah, everybody complained every six months when times changed. Uh, it's just that I think, yeah, it doesn't always feel like the nicest and there are some people that aren't in like, uh, um, uh, like doesn't uh, are where time zones change and then it's it's uh, sometimes weird that whenever the US changes, it changes. Um, um, for them as well. But I think if the decision is every meeting can decide it for themselves, I think that makes sense to me. And I right. do want to uh, co ask, cover your first point so that everyone is aware, We the limit for GitHub runners on a free plan is 20. And we have been well over that limit forever. GitHub never enforced that. A, a few weeks ago, Without any notice, they started enforcing it, which is why we're having problems. Um, working on a more cogent solution than the one we have. And that is a discussion that I'm going to have with Daniela and uh, Hart about the, the CI thing. So I, I'm not ignoring it. It's front of mind. And we're trying to figure out how to go forward. And I would add um that i saw some interesting discussions in the community architects discord channel on this topic um some suggestions around how to make how to make improvements to uh your actions your github actions to ensure that things are canceled uh so it, multiple pull requests come on or multiple commits come on the same pull request that uh, it cancels the initial run and that you're not duplicating the, the testing. Um, so I think there's some interesting conversation that's going on in the community there in that community architects channel um, that, you know, if you have any ideas or suggestions, I think adding to that would be good. Um, and, you know, trying to get everybody to, to think about the ways in which they might, um, you know, help, help this problem until uh, some sort of resolution. Uh, long-term resolution can be had. Stephen? I was going to say, um, given Rise on it and and doing things, certainly delighted by that and su suggest we talk about it next week or, you know, once or when Rye feels like um, we can hear more. I think we can be a good conduit out to the projects and figure out the communication plan for this. Um, so happy to de defer it. Um, it's absolutely top of mind for us, and I know I know Rye knows that, but happy to defer it. Um, um, thank you, Timo, for raising it though, and but happy to talk about it next time. Okay. Uh, any other items to discuss before we hand it off to Bobby to talk about the documentation task force? Hey, Bobby, I think it's on to you. Okay, great. Hi, everybody. Um, so the, I have um, to apologize. I've been out of service um, on Mondays for the past uh, two weeks um, when the documentation and the onboarding task force have met. So I've caught up on the recordings, but there's really um, going to be a push forward on both of these task force this week as I will be able to focus on them now. Um, I'm going to share my screen real quick. Okay, so the first thing I want to go over is the mentorship. So I have um, applied for a, a mentorship for the documentation standards. And this isn't just the standards for um, 
the maintainers when they're creating documentation um, to read. This also has to do with like maybe best practice badges to make sure that you can, you know, train business people as well as uh, developers on, you know, get information out to who it needs to go to. So we're going to be developing guidelines and templates. And I know Tracy has taken a big step forward with the maintainers guidelines for creating documentation. And we're going to be working on that in the future. Um, one of the things that I want to discuss, and I'm not really sure how this is going to go over. I know that Peter and myself um, and a few other people on the TS, TOC call are reviewing the mentorship programs um, that are up for um, or nominated for the mentorship. Um, and a lot of them have to do with individual projects documentation. So I'm kind of hoping this week to go through those and maybe reach out to the people who supply those to see if there's any synergies with what this main documentation and maybe get the mentors working together, you know, maybe one on one project and one on other, but with the same idea of a, a continuous look and feel for Hyperledger stuff um, that or output that we produce. So again, I'm going to be reaching out to the other um, documentation and onboarding um, mentorship um, applications and see, again, if there's any, and I'll work closely with Min and David on that um, to see. The only other, let me just minimize this for a second, is the uh, actual uh, wiki page for the overall um, documentation task force. Um, again, um, my to-do items are survey for the meetings as we're discussing the 12 o'clock noon on Eastern Standard Time isn't really a good time for anybody but people who are on the Eastern <laughs> Eastern Seaboard of the United States. So um, I'm going to be sending out that survey more has to do with um, the outcome for the task force. So I'll be adding to that survey a convenient time and getting it out to everybody who's shown an interest so that we can maybe meet um, at a more convenient time for the entire globe. Um, so there, here's just some tasks that we need to go over. And again, if you're interested, please just reach out. Um, there's a link to the, so this is in the, um, on the wiki page, you can just, you know, search out documentation um, task force and you'll get this page. Um, it links right to the mentorship application and it discusses like the deliverables that we want to accomplish. And again, these are the people who have shown interest. I know I talk with John all the time, so hopefully um, everybody else can jump on. And we have a Discord channel. Um, I check that all the time too. So please, if you have any comments on that, reach out there. And again, here's just some references to um, some tools that are made available to the community from Hyperledger that we're going to incorporate in some of this stuff. Again, this is the same as last week with the um, outcomes what everybody's using. And again, Tracy, again, has worked on the GitHub um, for the maintainers to um, get that um, done. So Tracy, if you have any comments on that. Um. Yeah, I'll, I'll just add, I uh, did create a lab proposal uh, to uh, bring in the, uh, the template that I had created, the documentation template that I had created into Hyperledger Labs. Um, that proposal was accepted, and I did transfer the repository over to Labs. Um, so it's now available. I'll make sure to put that link in the Discord channel. I don't think I have done that, so um, let me let me make sure I do that, so that everybody has a reference to it. But uh, yeah, if there's any sort of updates or anything like that, if anybody wants to become a maintainer for that uh, repository, you know, happy to to get people to um, volunteer and to become a maintainer and to make changes and, and uh, happy to add you as a code owner to that. So um, like I said, I'll add the link to the Discord channel and feel free to, to use it or um, make it better. Thank you. And as we were talking about the documentation standard, I know the onboarding meeting was held and I listened to David to the recording. And um, we also feel for the onboarding um, mentorship, as well as the task force, we want to work with the people from start here. We want to make sure that we have not, again, recreating information so much as just making the information um, available to where people go to join Hyperledger, like the, the web page, the wiki pages. We want to make it easy for people who 
have to create something or want to want to learn something um, really easy to find. And, and we feel the best way to do that is if we all work together from the developers to the business people to everybody so that when you hit Hyperledger, you know where to go and get the information you need instead of spending a lot of time searching through pages and pages to find your what you need. So we're trying to figure out how the user interface will incorporate a start here for developers, a uh, start here for, you know, is this right for your business, a start here for, you know, you want to help the developers uh, with presentation, you know, whatever, whatever your goal is in the community to get involved. We want to make that easy for you. So again, that task force is gearing up. We're reaching out to the start here people. And hopefully on Monday, everybody will meet um, until we find a better time and discuss um, anything that they heard here that piqued their interest to help out. And again, I'll be reaching out to the mentorship people if there's onboarding spots in any of those programs um, as I go through them um, to see if there's any synergies that they can be combined and Put efforts together to work towards one goal. So does anybody have any questions? Oh, Peter. Uh, not a question. Sorry, Bobby. I just wanted to plug in that uh, we have the mentorship project proposal coming out of the onboarding task force. And uh, after a long while of just promising to get it done, I finally actually added some specific tasks to the expected outcome section of the document and uh so what i wanted to but the reason why i wanted to interrupt with this is because i wanted to make sure that the people on the committee for uh selecting the mentorship project proposals uh double check the document itself because if they already sort of scored it based on uh the content that was there before, then I just wanted to ping them saying there's a little more content, a little more specific content. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Sorry for interrupting. Oh, no worries. And I can check on the um, matrix that Min gave us for the mentorships um, if anybody has actually read it already. So I'll double check to make sure. Thank you. Any other questions? Bobby, I just want to maybe, I don't think we ever took the TOC through this. Um, I think we took the documentation task force through this. So maybe it would be worthwhile just to uh, have people take a look at this as we go through. Is that okay with you? Sure, fine. Um, sure. So uh, the, do you want to go through it or? Sure, I could go through it. Um, so this is the lab um, that exists. It's under Hyperledger Labs documentation template. It uses uh, make docs as the mechanism material for make docs to generate the uh, particular website. You can see that it is um, at hyperledgerlabs.github.io slash documentation template, which is this site here. Um, and this is uh, really the first page is just instructions on what would need to be changed in order to make this fit the needs of a particular project. Um, so it, it kind of goes through the configuration updates that you would need to change um, in the makeducks.yaml file, how you uh, replace the logos that are here and here on the um, particular website, uh, different information about what needs to be updated as far as the documentation um, that would exist. It's basically just markdown files that are created. Um, so we've got concepts and tutorials and guides and references uh, contributing in an FAQ and a glossary. And you can see those all linked up here at the top. Um, there's placeholders there now. So there's not real content in any of this except for uh, the contributing section. I did um, take this from other places. You can see the credits on um, this come from the Sawtooth contributing documentation. Uh, you know, this was just something that looked like it was fairly complete as far as what should be included here. Um, information on how you go about reporting a bug, or requesting a change for a project, and then asking a question, uh, which just basically points to chat and the different mailing lists that exist out there. 
Um, again, this is all just a template for people to use and to do what they want with it. Um, this is in attempting to, to kind of say these are some of the things that you should include. Um, it's, you know, if you want to add another section or um, change this in any way, shape or form, you know, that's completely up to the project as to, to what they want to do. Um, but yeah, this is uh, something that I, I thought was a good starting place for new projects that might be coming in. Uh, doesn't have to necessarily be um, a replacement if, if you've got a good already documentation system for your project, but um, just something to help. The other thing I'll point out just quickly is that it does um, provide for versioning. Uh, although it's not really great in the template right now for the different sorts of versions. Um, so that's going to need to be improved as we move forward, um, you know, with this particular template. Uh, so right now, you know, it just basically creates a point one, <laughs> regardless of whether or not you're doing releases or, or that sort of thing. So there's going to have to be some updates to the, the GitHub action to handle releases and, and how you would create those different versions. So uh, anyway, it's out there. If you're interested in taking a look, feel free to do that. Um, any comments or questions? Steven? Awesome stuff. Um, we've been uh, struggling through trying to retroactively put a, a, a documentation site together. Um, my first question was going to be about the versioning, so really interested to know, uh, you know, any any progress you've made on that, or any any guidance you can give on how to do um, the the versions that would be helpful. Um, presumably, you, you, this is in. I mean, it won't be hard for me to find, but uh, in chat, uh, make sure that that goes in there. I'm going to take a look at it and mm -hmm. see if it can help us with what we've got. Um, we've got, uh, we, the first try we did was overly complicated. Um, I've now, I think we've now got it down to reasonable, um, but still, um, dealing with versions is hard and that's the biggest thing I'm worried about. So, and definitely interested in any guidance or, uh, learnings shared on, on that part of it. Thank you for doing yeah, this. That's great. Yeah, no worries, Stephen. So right now it uses Mike. Um, to do the deployments. Uh, you can see right now, right, it's very, very much hard coded as to um, just creating a, a point one and assigning also the latest so that you set the default to latest. Um, but there is some examples of different sorts of projects that use this as well um, that are, are basically uh, on the release, right? The CI happens on the release and you can deploy um, based on the, the release number uh, that exists in there. Um, I'll, I'll find a link to that and make sure to include that as well in, in what exists. I think it's already out there on the documentation uh, task force channel, but it's probably not easy to find at this point. Um, so anyway, that's, uh, that's what's happening in the current template is just really something that's very stupid, but I wanted to be able to at least show that we could do versioning um, when we needed to do versioning for the different versions that we'll have for our projects. Dave? Who's Mike? <laughs> I it's actually the, uh, don't know who Mike is, but it's, a, it's, a, it's an application that exists um, that will work with make docs to do different sorts of deployments, versioning deployments. Is the uh, recommendation these days to put the source of the docs in the same repo as your main code repo or in a separate repo? I don't know that we have any sort of uh, best practices there, Dave. Okay. Yeah, on I, I Fabric, at least, we've like, had it. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. I personally like when it's in the same repo, just because I'm lazy and don't like to look for the second repo. Um, I always like to just go look for the docs folder. Um, but that's just me, right? Like, I don't know that that's a, a good practice or not. Um, yeah, I mean, that's what we know. concluded for Fabric as well. And what I was getting to was the releases. So we'd, we'd have release branches in Fabric for minor releases. And it's pretty, it's lined up pretty well with the docs. So 
the doc versions are just aligned with our uh, release branches, which has worked really well. I don't know if this can do that or if this would be different. Uh, I think it should be able to do that without a problem, uh, Dave. I, I think that it would actually make a whole lot of sense. Basically, what this does is it deploys to the GitHub pages um, a branch so that uh, you have basically a github.io. Um, so obviously, that's this looks like labs.hyperledger.org, but basically, this is github.io um, that it's pointing to. Okay, yeah. So we yeah we found it's very useful to have the docs follow the same uh, versioning scheme as the as the code. So if that's possible with this, that'd be really good. Yeah. Peter. I just wanted to plus one keeping the documentation source code with the source code that it documents, so that they're always tightly coupled in this sense. Uh, if you tag the source code, the documentation with that automatically gets tagged as well. And then there's never any question about which version of documentation belongs to which version of the code. And if you have multiple repositories, they could diverge. And also if you have multiple repositories, you have to manage multiple repositories. And there's a maintainer who does a lot of the, the administrative chores around configuring the repositories. I am on the opinion of the opinion that the less repositories you have to manage for a project, the better, because uh, you will always make some mistake where the configuration of one repo gets out of sync with another and then things just don't work because of it. Yeah, I agree. I was just raising the slight concern that it looked like the versioning here might be different from the versioning of the code, which I would not agree with, at least for my projects. But if it is possible to align them pretty easily, then that'd be great. Yep, agreed. Uh, I was about to say also that there's uh, these GitHub variables and the YAML files and the workflow files that you can use. Uh, GitHub.ref is one that you can use to extract Git tags, and so uh, if if anyone's interested, we have in in Cacti, we have, for example, workflows that automatically notice if the workflow is running on the main branch and if the current commit that it is running on has a Git tag, and then that's how our automate release automation works. It just picks up when you tag something in the code uh, with a tag name that starts with a V. Uh, as in version. And so we could tailor this YAML file that Tracy was showing to do the exact same thing. It just picks up if you tag the source code and it automatically builds it with that tag. Yeah, Peter, I'd love to have a reference to that. I I think that is exactly what we want to do. And then I would be able to tie, like you, you and Dave have said, to the, the release that's being made. Um, you know, this was this was Stephen had said, hey, can we do versioning on this? And I was like, I don't know, let me see. Uh, and so I just did the, you know, the stupid change of making it a, a point 0.1. Um, but I, I would really like to see about changing this YAML file to reflect based on how you do releases, right? Um, so it's not um, tagging the release of the documentation, but tagging the release of the project itself um, going forward. So. Um, I'm not a GitHub Actions expert in any way, shape, or form. So uh, that's, that's why what you see here is pretty um, dumb and basic. <laughs> Steven? Um, one of the things we're doing, and I just want to bounce this to see if anyone has advice, but um, what we're doing is um, keeping the documents themselves in the repo, in the product repo, but having a, a separate documentation site that is really just automatically populated um, and then and then published. Um, so I don't know if that is a model that's good, bad, or indifferent. Um, it made sense to us um, and especially to manage the multiple versions. But um, so anyway, a possibility um, and be interested in feedback on if that's a really dumb idea.
Well, I do have to say all of these things I will put into um, the task force um, best practices. Um, so thank you for all your ideas. And if there's no more questions, I'll turn it back over to Tracy. Yeah, and if, it, if anybody does have any uh, thoughts for Stephen, um, you know, definitely reach out to Stephen or um, raise your hand now and we can get a potentially an answer for Stephen about the best practices there around websites for documentation. All right, Stephen, I'm going to take that as nobody has any uh, suggestions or ideas that will help you, <laughs> at least at this point. But if, he, if anybody does, please feel free to reach out to Stephen um, or on the Documentation Task Force even uh, channel. But uh, yeah, that's all I had scheduled for today. <laughs> no down, no thumbs down, Stephen. Um, <laughs> if uh, if there's nothing else, we can go ahead and close out the meeting. All right. Well, thank you all for attending, and we will see you again next week. Dave, I think you're up next week for the task force discussion. Okay. Thanks a lot, Tracy. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.